Yo, what is up guys? Uh, today, what I'm going to be doing is ranking my top 10 MCU films of all time. Um, I did this yesterday, I uploaded it without realising that the audio was corrupt, so there was no audio playing, which I'm uh, sorry about. Um, thanks to some of you guys for DM me on Twitter to tell me about the issue. Uh, I took down the video straight away, and I'm redoing it now today. Um, so before we get started, please make sure to like, subscribe, uh, follow my socials that my socials down below. Um, obviously, Twitter at shadowhunter four one nine. You'll catch me on there a lot, uh, retweeting some of my mates' stuff and all that. So having a good time. Um, so let's get into it. As you can see, coming in at number ten, we have Captain America: The First Avenger. Now, the Captain America trilogy for me is the strongest one out of all of them. Um, obviously, I think that the first Avenger is the weakest, which just shows how good the trilogy is. Um, obviously, this is uh, the second best origin story in the MCU for me. Uh, we'll see the uh, best one later on. Um, obviously, Chris Evans in Captain America is a really good choice. Um, the storyline, Red Skull, um, just the World War Two theme around it as well. Uh, it's a really good choice, a really good uh, way to start off Captain America. And overall, I think that this film is going to be a good watch for years to come. So coming in at number ten, Captain America: The First Avenger. Well, number nine would have been Spider-Man: Homecoming, but it's not on Disney Plus, so I can't really show you it. So I'm going to show one of the films that he is in, and that's Captain America: Civil War. Um, Spider-Man: Homecoming is a really good story first Peter Parker we see probably the most relatable Peter Parker that we've had yet um, Tobey Maguire can't really express himself outside of the suit Andrew Garfield expressed himself too much out of the suit and didn't really stick to the Peter Parker that we knew and then Tom Holland's that sweet spot for Spider-Man and we see that in Homecoming as well uh, see Spider-Man have to go back to his roots for his final battle which I heavily enjoyed um, and we actually see Spider-Man struggle and fall a bit and we see how even a teenager he can rise from the ashes and overcome the evil um, obviously um, I can't wait for Spider-Man 3 and I started filming uh, on Monday in Atlanta so I can't wait to see what comes out of the film but uh, yeah Spider Hole coming in. Coming in at number nine. Coming in at number eight is the original Avengers film. Now, this film when it came out was important as hell. It really changed how people thought of the superhero genre. Uh, because before we had stuff like maybe the probably the most popular film to think of is Spider Man Two and uh, Batman. But now when this film came out it just absolutely blew everyone's mind uh, we saw the culmination of everything that happened in phase one everyone that was included in there came together as you can see and Loki was a really good villain I felt like he's definitely going to be one of the best one of the more known villains to come through the years but overall this film I really enjoyed it, it um, couple of problems it is that Captain America was a bit too good at two shoes in this film and um, just would have liked to have seen a bit more Hawkeye I know there was a bit more Hawkeye in the film than usual but it would have been fun to see a bit more of him just a good character Hawkeye definitely underrated in the MCU um, but yeah at number eight we have the original Avengers film Coming in at number seven, we have Avengers Endgame. Now, the reason I put it number seven instead of like somewhere where number three or two would be, like most people would have, is that in Act One the film was a bit too slow for my liking. Act Two and Three, of course, it picked up the pace. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of iconic moments that come out of this film, like Captain America picking up me on here for the first time. Um, get to see to well, uh, Steve finally say Avengers Assemble after it got cut off short at the end of Age of Ultron 
Um, but overall, this film's good. We see Fat Four, which is a really good choice that they did. So they won't make four too OP. Um, obviously, we've got to see a bit more Ant Man, which I enjoyed. Um, of course, one of the uh, final big acts of Chadwick Boseman. Um, we get to see a 2014 Thanos, a more arrogant Thanos, like a teenager Thanos, as you could say, uh, just a bit more arrogant and a bit more self-indulged, a bit egotistical. Um, and also, unfortunately, we get to see Captain Marvel. Uh, don't really like the character, but overall, um, I enjoy the film. Uh, it's going to be well obviously it's smashed box office record so it's going to be remembered for years to come uh, obviously we see the tragic death of Tony Stark which is just sad didn't want to see him go but I could understand that it's the perfect way for him to go no one ever wants to see their fav favourite superhero die but unfortunately that sometimes happens so Avengers Endgame number 7 coming in at number 6 as you can see here uh, we have Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's just go to here a bit more. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. When it first came out, I thought that it's just a, a money, a cash grab, but it's more than that. We see some of the most funniest characters like Groot and Rocket. I love Rocket in this film. Uh, I just love Rocket overall. He's a good character that they brought in. Uh, we see Chris Pratt as Peter Quill, which I think was a very good call from the executives over at Disney and Marvel. Um, the storyline of it altogether is a bit bland. Uh, we see Ronan, who didn't really play up to the excitement. Um, obviously, I get that the Battle for the Universe was in a dance off, it was a funny way to end it, but it just wasn't for me. But I think the goods heavily outweigh the bads in this film. And it's just a good watch if you ever want to just sit down with your kids and just watch this film, then you're going to enjoy it. So that's uh, Guys of Galaxy coming in at number six. Coming in in the top five spot, we have Captain America Civil War. Now I'll put this here, uh, not higher. Is that just like uh, Endgame? The star is a bit slow, but more. I can understand why the first act's there. It's just more uh, character building for the film. Um, we see the divide, as you can see, between Cap and Iron Man. Um, obviously, I was Team Iron Man for this. Uh, we finally get to see Black Panther and Spider Man join the team, uh, which was long awaited and uh, a really good addition if I'm being honest uh, two characters that are going to be the uh, cornerstones of the MCU to come uh, Black Panther and Spider-Man in this film um, obviously Helmut Zemo definitely not the most aggressive like villain in the MCU but one of the smartest and one of the most underrated. Uh, I can't wait to see him in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, <clears throat> for being honest, this film, the second part of the airport fight, some of the best Marvel that we've seen to date. Um, and yeah, I can't really say much more about it. But that is Captain America Civil War coming in at number five. Coming in at number four is Thor Ragnarok. Um, this film. I'd say he's more funny than Guardians of the Galaxy, if I'm being honest. Um, obviously, we had Taika Waititi's magic in this film. Uh, he let the cast kind of like improvise some of the most of the lines. Um, obviously, for this film, this just redeemed Thor for me, honestly. Uh, Hela was a really good villain in this film. Uh, obviously, she was a bit too OP until Ragnarok came in and ruined her shit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we see uh, Hulk uh, we haven't seen him for two years since Age of Ultron but then we finally see him again uh, return and uh, we figure out that he'd been uh, fighting in arenas for the last two years 
Obviously, he turns back to Dr. Banner. Sorry, Bruce Banner. Uh, we see the addition of Valkyrie, who I think is a bit bland, but I can see her. I'm just, I can see her purpose in the MCU. Um, and the storyline's good. Uh, <clears throat> the way that it ties into Infinity War is really good as well. And I can't really say much more about it, because why this will go on for way too long. <laughs> <laughs> but that is far that is four Ragnarok coming in at number four. Uh, coming in at number three, I have the original Iron Man film. Now this is the bad boy to start everything off. Um, obviously one of the best villains in the MCU, Obadiah Stane, played by Jeff Bridges in this film. And um, I'm going to go more in depth with Obadiah and tell him in another video. But I'll leave it at that for now. Um, obviously, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man is probably one of the best casting choices that I've seen in my lifetime. I'm 15, so probably people that are like blah 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 from the 1990s. I went born then, so obviously uh, we see Rhodey, who is Terrence Howard, soon to be Don Cheadle. Uh, obviously. It's a bit more uh, comedic now when uh, Terrence, Howard's, Terrence Howard looks at a suit and says next time. Because they were next time. Um, obviously the storyline's really good. Uh, the way that Iron Man was built up in this film is near perfect. Uh, obviously there's going to be a couple of problems with the film. Uh, I can't really outline them but uh, I'm sure I could do it in another video for you guys if you want me to. But we have Iron Man coming in at number three. Coming in at number two, we have Captain America the Winter Soldier. I love this film. Um, ever since it came out, it was the best MCU film until one film that came out in 2018 overtook it. Um, this film is for the dark world to right. We see lots of dark twists and turns. Spoiler alert for people who haven't seen it yet. Uh, we see Bucky Barnes as a Winter Soldier. Um, also, we see Captain America and his beliefs questioned in this film, as the people that he's worked for are actually the evil people. So he would be counted as evil to some people, if you get what I mean. Uh, also, we see the uh, fake death of Nick Fury, and uh, we also see a callback to the Winter Soldier. With the music that's played in Endgame when Steve finally hooks up with uh, Peggy. Which I currently have on my Spotify playlist because it's an absolute banger. Um, honestly this film is too good to not watch. Uh, I know some people haven't watched it yet. And to those people I highly recommend that you drop everything you're doing. Wait, finish this video first. Drop everything you're doing. Get Disney Plus. Watch this film. Get some popcorn. Get a towel, get your parents, get your family, watch this film, because it's an absolute banger. Coming in at number two, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. But, coming in at number one, I have Avengers Infinity War. Now, this is the film of the MCU, in my opinion. Um, this definitely has better storyline writing than Endgame, but it's a bit less iconic in some of the stuff that it does. Um, also we see probably the best MCU villain, uh, Thanos, uh, we see his, uh, we don't see his origins exactly but we kind of get an understanding of why he's doing this and um, as, um, I can't remember, yeah, um, as film theory explained it, he might actually be right about that and the stuff that he's done, uh, obviously we, we can understand where Thanos is coming from because it's happening to us right now. Obviously, resources finite, uh, food finite, and all that. But obviously, as film theory said, just get a gauntlet that will give you infinite resources. But oh uh, well, um, we kind of see the effects of civil war in this film, even though it's two years after civil war. Uh, just a little side note: I've just thought about this. Uh, the Captain America timeline doesn't really make sense. I'll explain that in another video if you want. But 
besides from that, um, we see the tragic loss of Gamora, we see everyone dusted away, like, literally everyone but Tony on this screen gets dusted, Peter, Drax, Quill, Mantis, Bucky, T'Challa, Shuri, even though Shuri wasn't shown on screen, you can see it in the, uh, in Endgame, um, we see Nick Fury go, and get dusted, we see uh, Hope, etc. Obviously we don't see some of those in this film, but we see the effects of it, and that's a good thing. This, this film will always be the catalyst for Phase 4, and in my opinion I think this film should have beaten Endgame in box office records, but that's just me. Uh, but besides from that, this film is near perfect. A couple of problems in it, but they're just minuscule problems, and I love it to bits. And I'll probably watch after this video. So uh, coming in at number one, we have Avengers: Infinity War. But as all good things come to end, so should this video. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, Please make sure to like, subscribe, share this video, retweet it on my Twitter, which is ShadowHunter419. Uh, thank you to uh, Arcos Captures for making the thumbnail. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, shout out to the fandom. Um, and yeah, uh, another video coming out today, like I said on my Twitter, uh, just for my apologies about the uh, audio of the last video. Obviously, there weren't any, so their lack of audio at the end of it. Um, but yeah, uh, catch you all later, take care, and peace.